morning. Welcome to Sunday School Recorded Style for Sunday, uh, November 27th. Happy Happy Sunday after Thanksgiving. Um, and welcome. My name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the Director of Children and Young Families at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church. Um, this week starts our study of Advent, and we're going to be um, in Sunday school, we're going to be using both the scripture that's being read in the service as well as godly play and kind of tying the two things together to see what we can learn about Advent. So without further ado, let's pray and get started. Gracious and loving Lord, please open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, and open our eyes to you and to your word and your word in the world. Help us to learn the lessons that you have for us here in your word and help us learn how to apply those lessons to our lives each and every day. Please bless this study and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what we are going to do is we're going to read, first we're going to read Isaiah 2, 1 through 5, and then we're going to read Matthew 24, 36 through 41. We're going to talk for a minute, and then we're going to actually watch the first section of the Godly Play series on Advent. Um, and I think I'm just going to leave it there for this week. Um, if I think of anything else I want to say afterwards, I'll say it, but I don't think I do. <laughs> so without further ado, Isaiah 2, 1 through 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle di disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now, the next one comes from, as I said, Matthew um, 24, verses 36 through 44. No one knows about that day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, when we get to the godly play stories, um, the first of the stories talks about prophets. And the story tells us that prophets are people who come so close to God and God comes so close to them that they know what God wants them to tell the people. Um, and there are a lot of things that the prophets knew and one of the things that the prophets knew and one of the things that the prophets told people was that Bethlehem was the place. They didn't know when precisely and they didn't know why 
precisely, but they knew Bethlehem was the place and they were pretty sure it had something to do with the Messiah. It probably doesn't come as a big surprise to you that God doesn't think like we do. Um, and so when God tells prophets things, God's telling just regular people. And those regular people are trying then to translate what it is that God told them. Imagine, this is the way I imagine, imagine trying to tell your puppy something. You have something very complicated to tell your puppy. And your puppy knows a couple of words like park and walk and treat and good boy, which apparently also means treat. Um, but they don't, they don't know all the rest of those words, but what they do understand is your tone of voice. They really get that. Um, so when God talks to prophets, I think God puts pictures in the prophets' heads of what it is that God wants us to know. But even then, because God thinks on such a much bigger bigger scale than we do. Remember, this is God who created the universe by just speaking it into existence. Um, those pictures are probably going to be so full and so complicated that it's going to be really hard to understand them. Another thing about prophets that I think is really interesting is that prophets are really good about looking at the, they are good at looking at the big picture too. For instance, um, they could look at a sweater and they would see all of the little knots that tie together and they would see all that stuff and how it all creates, how each one of those little knots makes this sweater. They might not remember to put it on, but they could see that. You and I just look at it. Yeah, sweater, cool. Prophets probably would be kind of bad drivers because they'd get so interested in watching the traffic patterns and thinking, oh, there are an awful lot of white and black and gray cars. Why aren't there blue cars? And they'd think about that and they wouldn't necessarily be really on point noticing the person that just stopped in front of them and probably not very good drivers. And if a prophet was in a a gym class when there were a lot of different games going on in the big gym, you know, there was, I don't know, basketball going on someplace and volleyball over here and maybe dodgeball over there. And I don't even know what all of us, they could tell you who was doing what in each game and what was going on. And then they'd probably get hit in the head with a ball because they weren't paying attention to that. They were paying attention to everything. That makes them really good at seeing the big picture, really good at that. And that is one of one of prophets' great gifts. And that was one of the reasons that they were so good about talking to kings and saying, mm, here's, here's what's happening in your kingdom. In today's scripture, we hear about two different prophets. We hear about Isaiah, who is a very famous prophet. He was the, the first one. And we also hear Jesus talking. Jesus was the one that was talking about you know, in the last days and Noah and all that stuff. We don't, we forget that Jesus was a prophet, but he was. He was a lot of other stuff too, but Jesus was also a prophet. Um, both stories in the Isaiah scripture, the, the part that's in front of the, the first chapter is all about the, the end days, the times when, Times just aren't going to get any worse than that. It's things are going to get as bad as they're going to get. And these are the people, the little, the piece of the scripture that we read, are these are the people who are, who are going to go to the mountain and going to try and not be with everybody else where it's just as bad as it's going to get. And in the part that Jesus was talking about, he's talking about right before the Messiah comes back right before um, things start to get better. Um, and that the rapture is part of that. And that's the, the people 
two people in the field and one is just suddenly not there. Um, so why are we listening to these particular scripture readings right before Christmas? Christmas is supposed to be all about love and joy and hope and faith and all that great stuff. Why are we listening to these things about times when it's about as awful as it's ever going to get? Why, 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 why? Because in both cases, things are as bad as they're going to get right before the Messiah comes. And when we are getting ready for Christmas, when we are in Advent, it is the time of getting ready, the time of getting ready to enter the mystery of Christmas. And the mystery of Christmas is that the God, the King, that came before Jesus is coming again. And we, 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 we relive that excitement every Christmas. We think about how wonderful it will be when Jesus comes back and sets everything right. Um, so now it's time for me to share my screen. And I'm going to optimize for video clip. And I'm going to, and I'm going to share. And we're going to play this. Hello, welcome to Godly Play. Let's get ready. The bell is a signal that it's time to get ready for our story. I say, the Lord be with you. And then you respond, and also with you. Everything has changed. It's now the time of the color purple. Purple is the color of kings and queens. No one could wear purple in those days, except royal people. Roman citizens could wear a little stripe of purple, but that was all. Purple was a serious color, and something serious is about to happen. A king is coming. But he's not the kind of king people thought was coming. This king had no army, no great house, and no riches. This king was a baby who was born in a barn. The king who was coming is still coming. This is full of mystery. You know, a mystery is hard to enter sometimes. That's why the time of Advent is so important. Sometimes people can walk right through a mystery and not even know it's there. This time of year, you will see people rushing around buying things and doing this and that, they might, but they might miss the mystery. They don't know how to get ready, or maybe they just forgot. The church learned a long time ago that people need a way to get ready to enter or even come close to a mystery like Christmas. The church set aside four weeks to get ready. This is such a great mystery that it takes that long to get ready. During this time, we're all on our way to Bethlehem. We are all making the journey. We're all getting ready to enter the mystery of Christmas. So let's go with the prophets, the Holy Family, the shepherds, the angels, the magi, and all the rest to make the journey that was not just back then, it's also now. This is the card for the prophets. Prophets are people who come so close to God and God comes so close to them that they know what's most important. They pointed the way to Bethlehem. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen there, but they knew that this was the place. This Sunday, we remember the prophets. The prophets point the way to Bethlehem, showing us the way too. Stop, watch, pay attention. Something incredible is going to happen in Bethlehem. This is the light of the prophets. Let's enjoy the light. Prophets are people who know the most important things. 
They know which way to go. They are the ones that showed us the way. Now we can go to Bethlehem too. I want to show you what happens when the light is changed. Sometimes people don't pay attention to this. They miss this part. Look, do you see how the flame is just in one place now? It's right there. But when I change the light, it will no longer be in just one place. You can't see it after it spreads out all over the room, but it is there. Now it's no longer in this one place. It's spreading out, getting thinner and thinner as it fills up the room with the light of the prophets. Anywhere you go in this room, you will be close to the prophets. There may even be one sitting near you. Prophets can be boys and prophets can be girls. They pay, they pay attention. They know things. Now I wonder how the prophets listened to God. I wonder how they knew it was God who spoke. I wonder if there are still prophets today who can show us the way to Bethlehem. I wonder what the way to Bethlehem was like. And I wonder what you would like to do next. Maybe you want to make an Advent wreath and put four candles on it for the four Sundays in Advent. And each Sunday, you could light a candle by drawing with a crayon. Maybe you want to have help from a parent and light some candles for Advent. But whatever you decide to do, go with God, go in peace. <laughs> As Betsy said, go with God and go in peace. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you had a wonderful week. Uh, I hope that you will be able to come and join us at the ornament party this Friday, December 2nd from 6 to 8 in Lindsay Hall. I would love, love, love to know that you were going to come so I know how much pizza to buy. Um, but it's okay. If I, if you just come, we'll make do. It will be fine. So take care, be well, um, and I'll see you back here next week. Bye.